Alright guys, so in this video we're going to be making the front shell, uh, the front grill, including the inner one. And when you take a deeper look, you can see there is some uh, sort of mesh grill in inside this front shell right here. Uh, just like this one we're seeing down here. So we're going to make that and we're also going to make this piece over here. This whole number plate and its uh, seat right behind it, we're going to make it probably in the next video. But let's get started and finish this off. So. Uh, let's get started by going all the way back here. This metal piece we're seeing here, we have one at the back right here. So all we're going to do is we're going to shift and D this to duplicate it like this. And we're going to rotate it by pressing R and then press Z and type in 180. Okay, to rotate it all the way to the front right there. Let me enable this for you guys real quick. Alright, so once you have that done, all we're going to do is to go into edit mode, alright? We're going to move this in edit mode, not in, uh, not in, what do you call it? Not in object mode, move it in edit mode so the location is exactly right at the center. So what we're going to do first is let's disable the mirror, alright? So put up the mirror by clicking on this one to disable it. And then take this whole thing and move it all the way here, alright? Then re-enable that just to make sure it goes over there. If you don't disable that before moving it, this is what happens. You see that? That is what happens. So make sure you disable it, move it before you actually turn back on the mirror modifier so we're gonna move this all the way here let me just press period to zoom in I'm gonna move this up to about here and I'm gonna move it in to about here now we are we have to rotate it in the z-axis a little bit but first let's change the pivoting point to boundary box like that so we're gonna rotate this in the z-axis like that and let's move it in the x like that I think it's pretty close to it so let me just get into front view like this like that so I'm gonna move it until it's tight like that so what I'm gonna do now is to take this let me just move it forward to about here to go somewhere here like that and finally what we're gonna do now is to take each edge like this so I'm gonna dissolve this one real quick I'm gonna take this one move it up in the z-axis until it falls out like that let's make sure it's sitting right on top of it like that so that is looking good then we can add back in that extra loop cut we removed press E and F, align it with the other side and keep it in there. So with that done, we're going to take this one and I'm going to move that one in as well, all the way to here. I'm going to take this one as well, move it in all the way to here. And I'm going to take these three, these three right here, and I'm going to move that also in to there. So if I'm taking a good look, I think it goes pretty much low to about here. So I'm going to get rid of this edge loop for now, and I'm going to take this one and pull it in to about here let me take a good look at this alright so I think I know what is going on so I'm gonna pull this out a little bit more to about here I'm gonna press E and Y extrude this in and then pull it up in the Z axis like that so yeah that should look about it right yeah I think that's it so that is looking good so that is going to be the what is it piece below oh no rear bumper metal piece so we're gonna change it to front bumper metal piece but first let's delete the 001 on top of that and then let's get here and type in front bumper metal piece like that so I'm gonna save that over real quick nice so that does it for that one what we're gonna do now is to create the front shell over here it's going to be a little bit tricky but as you can see this one is actually one piece what I mean is this circular area over here is extruded all the way to the side you can see it's sort of like it's joint to it so that's what we're going to try to make but we're not going to be making it one piece we're going to make it separate objects and then we're going to use a data transfer modifier a modifier in here this one right here to make it look as though it's attached to the circular one so that's what we're going to do right now first off we're going to create the circular area we only need this piece the front shell so let's take that one go into local view and then let's go into front view now so what I'm going to do is press shift and S, choose Keza to world origin. And then let's, hold on, I think we got rid of the, the uh, shrink wrap, I mean the blueprint model, the blueprint images. So let's go back to global view by pressing the num slash, that is the slash on a numpad. <coughs> and then select this, press control and I, and let me see. Let me just hide everything like that. Let's go into phone view. So you can see we have it here now. So what we're going to do is let's add in a mesh circle. Alright. 
So I want to go with, uh, I think, let me see, 32 might be too much, so let's go with 16, all right? So just type in 16, and then confirm it by pressing enter. Go into edit mode, let's move this up to here. Make sure it's, uh, make sure it's in the center. Scale this down by pressing S. Scale it down to fit to the hole. Bring it down so it's fitting very nicely, like that. I'm going to scale it up a little bit like that alright so with that done I'm gonna press F go into wireframe press I and then set the face to about there like that so I'm gonna press X and delete the faces so let's take all that and move it in the Y axis forward let's get onto the side let's see how that looks alright so pull it all the way back till it's sitting right here so you can see it's a little bit up on the side view but we're gonna keep it as it is in the front view because I think that is the most accurate and if you take a look you can see it's pretty much close to it that is much better let me get to the side view yeah so what I want to do now is to get it to the side view I want to press E you can see the length or the, the, the thickness from front to back of the cylinder right here it's not that it's not that thick it's not that much of a thickness so let's keep in mind of that so let's press E and it's going to extrude in the Z axis but I'd rather be careful I mean, I'd rather be much more precise by pressing Y again to extrude in the Y instead of the uh, presumed Z axis that it gave us. So I want to extrude this and then make sure it's about the same thickness I'm seeing in the reference image. And I think that is about here, right? Yeah, I think that is about it. So there is good. Hopefully it's not, yeah, so that is good. So with that done, we're going to add in a subdivision surface at level 2 like that and let me see back here what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the faces back here by pressing I and insert it a little bit like that I'm going to insert it one more time and I'll delete the faces right in the middle there so with that done I'm going to get in here add in two to the side I'm going to move it in the Y axis all the way up to here and let's change the uh, the selection option to edge change it to a selection mode and add in five yeah add in five loop cuts deselect this one and dissolve the rest do the same on the inside add in five deselect this one come on come on deselect this one and dissolve the rest so yeah that is looking good now click on object and select shade smooth like that nice so now it's looking much more like the image we have there. Let me just take a look over here. I don't know if we have to bend the circle a little bit, but I think we can keep it that way. I'm just going to move the whole thing in a little bit. Like to about here. Let me move it in a little bit more. Like that. Alright. Let me see. Okay, just just a little bit more. I'm just moving in a little bit more to about here. Nice. So I think that's better nice so now what we're gonna do now is to create the ones on the sides right here but we only we only have to create one half of this and then mirror it on the other side so let's get to front view and let me see what are we gonna use let's use a plane so let me save this over and then let's press shift and A and add in mesh plane go into edit mode let's move this all the way here get into wireframe move it here scale it in the Z axis all the way scale it down now to about here and let's scale it up a little bit. Press G and let's move that over here. I want to scale it up in the Z axis to about here. And let's move this out to here. Scale it in the Z axis a little bit more. Move this down to about here. Alright, so I think that is pretty good for now. So what I want to do now, press G and then X, move this till it is almost intersecting over here. So let's just zoom in pretty much well. Press G and then X, move this out to there. And let's change to vertex select mode. Take this one, move this also. You can move it with the arrow or whatever you want. Move it to about there, I guess. Uh, yeah. So let's move it to about there. So that is good. I'm gonna take this one now. Let me see how it looks over here. So it's not it's not intersecting or it's not uh meshing up. Or should I say meshing up? What's the word? Like 
if you take a look away you can see it sort of looks like it's joining to this cylinder right in the middle here but on this side you can see there's a bit of a gap there that's what I'm trying to explain to you guys uh, so let's pull this all the way back here take this one pull this back to about here let's make sure the gap is quite small like that so with that done what we're going to do now is to take the whole thing and let's insert the faces so I'm going to insert this till we have it all round like that so you can see that is good I'm going to take this one, pull this in the x-axis, take this, pull this in the x-axis, nicely like that, and uh, let me see, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is to select the face, first of all I'm going to take both of these, I'm going to move it in the z-axis, up, do the same thing here, take both of these, move it down in the z-axis, down, like that, and I'm going to go to face select mode, let me take this moving forward a little bit, I'm trying to match the blueprints lines here, so take this one, press X and delete the faces, Alright, so we're gonna take we're gonna take everything in here, move it in the y axis all the way forward, like that. Let me take a look. Yeah, so just a little bit more, like that. So we're gonna have to end we're gonna end up bending this one, alright? Because you can see it's falling out a little bit much. But there's an easy way to bend it, so once we get there, I'll show you guys. Alright, so let's do this. Now um what we're gonna do next is let me see. Uh First of, let's move this out a little bit. Let me take this, alright? I'm going to move it in the x-axis to about here. I'm going to do the same thing here. Move it to about, about here-ish. Yeah, move this out a little bit as well. So, yeah, that is looking good. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is to add in two loop cuts in here. I'm going to move them in the x as well. Just a little bit to make sure that gap is quite consistent and equal. I'm going to move this back a little bit, a little bit more like that. Alright, so let me just slide this up so it's sort of straight and slanted the way it was before. And I'm going to move this out just a little bit. Alright, I'm going to add in two on this side as well. Move that out till the gap is quite similar, like that. Alright, so that is looking great. So what I'm going to do now is to take the whole thing and I'm going to press E and then Y. You can see it's about, I think it's about the same distance as the cylinder, but just not all the way to the back. And it's starting to rain here, so if it gets too serious, I'll stop recording, but hopefully it doesn't. So before we actually do that, let me take this one, okay? We forgot to add supporting loop cuts at the back here. So let's add in, let's change to S select mode, add in 5 again, deselect this one, dissolve it, and let's do the same thing on the inside. Add in 5, deselect this one, deselect this one, deselect it keep selecting the other one make sure you deselect it before dissolving the others make sure you don't select any other thing else alright so with that done let's take this and let's go into edit mode again so we're gonna press E and then Y move this out until we have just a tiny gap back here like that move it out a little bit more nice so I wanna add in a subdivision surface now no not solidify subdivision surface change it the viewport to 2 and let's go into edit mode and let's try to fix things here now so I'm going to add in a loop cut over here press E to align it with that side move it out to about here and before we do anything else let's get into front view okay I want to move this a little bit more this particular one here so first of let's dissolve this again take this get into front view let's move this out a little bit I know it's off the blueprint but I just want to move it out a little bit I want to take this one now and that one get into front view move this out to there and then finally we're going to take the one over here get into front view we're going to move that out as well like that so yeah let's put up this subdivision and let's see how that looks so we need to make sure it's pretty straight because you can see now it's a little bit uh not good looking so let me just let me see let me take this one get into front view is that the one we need no this one instead and let's pull this out to here Let's take this one as well, pull it in the x-axis, and let's take this, pull it in the x, take this, pull it in the x. So you can see what I'm trying to do here. Nice. So with that done, let's re-enable the subdivision surface. Let's add in that loop cut. Press Ctrl and R, add it in, press E, and then align it with that side. Move it in quite close. Do the same thing over here, press E and then F. Align it with that side very nicely. Want to do the same thing over here, press E align it let me bring this one 
even in closer like that bring this one in close as well like that and in here press E and then F like that all right so that is looking good I'm gonna get into front view let's do the same thing to the side press E and then F move it in closely like that about the same amount nice let me take a look yeah so do the same thing over here press E move that in pretty close do the same thing down here E and then F move it in close and then finally here E and then move it in close so what I'm gonna do now is to add in loop cuts in the middle I'm gonna add in five here and five at the top like this but before I actually do that let's add in one in here okay press E let me just keep it straight. Press S and then X, type in 0. I want to move that all the way here. I want to do the same thing here. Press S and then X, type in 0. Move this all the way here. I want to add in 4, no, 3 in the middle, like that. I'm going to do the same thing here. S and then X. I'm gonna, this time I want to press Control B and then bevel this all the way from here to there. And add in 4 or 3 in the middle just like we did at the bottom alright so that is looking good now let's take these ones at the back make sure you have vertex select mode enabled and what we're going to do is we're going to set the faces uh, like that I think let's make sure nothing is, is intersecting you can see here these ones are almost intersecting so let's just slide this down and let's make sure nothing is intersecting reselect that make sure nothing is intersecting nice Let's insert one more time, just a tiny bit, like that, so you can see what I'm doing. Nice. So I don't need to move those ones, I'm going to keep it there. Alright, press X and delete the faces now, nicely. Alright, that is looking good. That is looking really, really good. So what I'm going to do now is to get to this side. I'm going to add in two in the middle, like that. What I want to do is pull it in the Y axis, so press G and then Y. And then let's pull this out to there, like that. So that I want to press Control and R through here. But before we actually do that, let me send these this one, this particular one up here. I'm gonna move it in the x-axis a little bit, like that. All right. So that done, let's just press Control and R in here. Press E. Or let me use the method we're using before. So press Control and R. Add in five. Deselect this. Dissolve the rest. Do the same thing in here. Add in 5, deselect this, dissolve the rest. Now let's press, click on object and select shade smooth. And let's see what we have. Alright, so I think it's looking almost like it. Nice. So uh, what else do we have to do? I think the thickness is quite thin on this side. So let's go over to the front view. I'm going to edit mode. So let's dissolve these edges again. I'm going to take the edges right at the end here, these ones. Okay, make sure the ones here are not selected. Hold down Control and deselect if you have any of them selected. Let's go into wireframe. We're going to move this in the x-axis, okay, until we have about the same thickness as in a reference image. Nice. So that is looking good. Okay, let me see. S N N X. no, S N N Y and type in 0. All right. It's already straight. S and Y type in zero. I'm just making sure all of them are flattening the Y axis, and it looks like they are. So I'm gonna press Control and R through here. Add in two. I wanna pull it in the Y axis. Yeah. So let's pull it in the Y axis just a little bit like that. Nice. I just don't like the way this side looks. How can we fix? Okay. Well. No. I don't like the way it looks. So let me see, undo all of that. How can we actually do this? Let me pull it back in. Uh, let me make this the active element, change the pivoting point back to active element, and then uh, let me rotate this in the Z axis and then see how that gets instead. Is that better? Kind of. It looks kind of better, but I still need to pull these ones out a little bit. So let me just let me undo all that again. So I'm just gonna undo all that. 
come on. Yeah, and then let's pull this in the y axis a little bit. I want to rotate it in the z axis. Uh, make sure the pivoting point is set to active element. And then let's rotate it a little bit more in the z axis, just a little bit. Like that. Alright, so that is looking good. Okay, so with that done, we're going to move into this side now. I want to take all of the ones in the middle here. So select this one. First of all, let me hide this. So I want to select this one right here. Hold Shift and Control and click on that one, like that. So what we're going to do now is to press I to insert the faces about the same thickness as the lip over here. So I think this is too much. Let's start that over again. Press I, insert it just a tiny bit to about there. Press X and delete the faces, like that. Nice. Okay. So all we're going to do finally is to take this one and let's bring back the other object. Oh, it brought everything. So let's take these three, press Ctrl and I, hide the rest. Let's take this one now. Go into edit mode. We're going to extrude this in the Y, in the X axis like this. Alright. So we're going to pull it out like this, get into front view. Let's make sure it's pretty, all of them are pretty close to the to the um, surface of the cylinder. So let's change back to boundary box and let's rotate this. Make sure they all fall pretty close to the surface, like that. So I want to deselect these ones because they pretty much fall there. I want to move this in the X. Deselect these. I want to move this now, like that. Nice. So with that done, kind of looks like this one pulled down a little bit. Let me pull it down in the Z axis and see. And then pull it out a little bit. I think that is looking much better. Alright, so all we're going to do now is to take this. Let's go into the object data buttons, add in a new uh, modifier, and then let's assign this to it. Make sure that is the only one assigned to it by checking. Click on select and see if that is the only one that is selected, just to make sure that is the only one that is assigned to it. And then with that done, what we're going to do is go out and we're going to add in a shrink wrap modifier. So shrink wrap, and we're going to make the target this cylinder right here. And we're going to change the vertex group to group, like that. And first of all, let's copy and apply this. Let's go in here. I'm going to press Ctrl and R3 here, press E to align it with that side, move it in. And let's go into the object data buttons and remove that from the group, like that. I'm going to add in one here to press E and an F, pretty close to this one, and remove that from the group as well, like that. Alright, so you can see this is coming out really nicely. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to take this one, I'm going to press with the, this thing being boundary box, I'm going to press Alt and S just to scale this out a little bit, okay? Just scale it out a little bit. So you can see what I did. That was all I did. Just to scale it out a little bit. Once you have done that, let's go on and add in the data transfer modifier. So I'm going to add in a data transfer modifier now. And the source, I think, the source will be this one right here. And what else? Let me see. Let me just increase the face this thing here so I'm going to change this to face what is that face corner data like that and we're going to enable custom normals and uh, let me see I'm going to load in the vertex group like that and uh, first of all we have to make sure this thing is what do you call it we have to make sure this thing has a um, an auto smooth enabled and if I remember, I think that was in the data buttons and it's under, is it normals? Yeah, so under normals and enable auto smooth like that. Let's go back to the modify stuff and let's see what we have. So, let's take a look at this. It's not looking that good. So, what I'm going to do now is let's try enabling or changing some of these settings here and let's see what we have. Uh... One of these should work unless something isn't right. You can see it's not working properly. It's not working that well. Uh, I think I noticed this in 2.8. I don't know if anybody was able to, you know, find a fix for it. But in 2.79, this actually works fine. But 
I noticed in 2.8 it wasn't really responding that well. So for now we're going to leave it like this and then we're going to try to deform this with the uh, lattice with the lattice and then it will be pretty much the same thing with the rest of the three so I'm only doing this one and then I'll end on that video and I'll leave these ones for you guys to do on your own so what I'm going to do now is uh, let's first of all add in the mirror modifier the mirror modifier needs to be at the very top so click on the arrow and move the mirror modifier all the way to the top just move it all the way to the top so it's on the top now and make sure you apply rotation like that and apply location nice so what I'm going to do now is to add in a lattice deform so let's go in here press A to select the whole vertices press shift and S and choose cursor to select it sorry and what we're going to do now is to add in a lattice so let's add in a lattice now so uh, go press shift and A and look for lattice so enable lattice like that press alt and R because you can see it's disoriented so after you add it in press alt and R to reorient it scale it down first of all let's go into front view <coughs> and let's scale it up a little bit more scale it up like that I'm going to scale it in the Z axis like that and finally in the Y axis like that so what I want to do now is to go into the lattice options here and let's enable let me see is it yeah, I think it's is it this one? I think that's the one. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, that's definitely the one. Let me see. Mm-hmm. So enable the U until we have about three of them in there. Like that. Nice. So all we're gonna do now is to take this one. First of all, let's create a new collection. Okay, so select this one, press M, say create new collection and then rename it lattices. Alright, so lattices like that and click on OK. So it's gonna move that down there like that into the lattices collection. And I'll take this and then select that and press Ctrl P and choose lattice deform right here. So anything we do to this in edit mode is going to affect our mesh down there like that. Okay, so that is what we're gonna to use to create that bend in here. So let me just undo all of this. I'm going to go over to the top view like this, go into wireframe, I want to take all of the vertices right, you can see I took all this four, I want to go up here, let's enable proportional editing by pressing O, and first of all let me get over here, alright, so enable proportional editing, and let's change it to, I think is it, let me try, let me try each of these options first, so let me just see, let me press G, bring down the fall off, now let me see how this looks. Okay, so it's definitely not this one. I think it's sharp. So select sharp and let's try this. So press G and Y. Yeah, it's definitely sharp. So I'm going to move this out. Make sure you increase the follow so it's pretty smooth. Like that. And then pull it. I don't know if sharp. Is it sharp? Yeah, it's sharp. No, let me try inverse square. Let me see what inverse square gives us. Inverse square, isn't it? Uh, let me see. It might be. It might be sharp. Yeah, <clears throat> sorry. Let me try smooth. Yeah, it's definitely sharp. So use sharp and pull this in the Y axis. Press G and then Y. Make sure the fall off is enough. And then pull this back to about to about here. Do we even need to bend this? I'm not sure. Um. Yeah, let's bend it. Let's bend it. So let me see. Where are we gonna move this to? I'm gonna. I'm going to click right here in the in the uh, surface here just to make sure this is the amount I need to move. So I'm gonna click right about here. So when I go into top view, it shows it to me how far I need to move it in. So I'm just gonna press G and then Y. I wanna move this back until it falls on top of it like that. So the fall off isn't enough. So I'm gonna try this again. Pull it back increase the fall off like that and I'll pull this back to right there so let's take a look let's hide the uh, so you can see the space is quite much as much as the one in there but we still need to pull it in a little bit more so I'm just gonna go into edit mode again I wanna pull this back a little bit more to there I think 
Yeah, so that is good. I'm gonna hide the lattice now. And let's take a look. Nice. So you can see it's looking exactly like what we have in the reference image. And I'm pretty sure we can all we can do now is to duplicate this and then move it down in the z-axis. So first what I'll do is I'll go into edit mode of this, press A to select this, press shift and S, choose Kesa to select it. I want to take this one, go into edit mode, change the pivoting point to 3D Kesa, and take this again, press shift and D to duplicate it like this. Go into edit mode, select the whole thing, press S and Z, and type in negative one, like that. That is looking good. So when I get out of that, you can see the lattice is affecting it. So what I'm going to do is press Alt and P, clear parent, so that the lattice re <coughs> so that the deformation resets like that. So what I'm going to do now is take this, press shift and D, and move this down to about the center of this G and then Z. I want to take this and take that, press Ctrl P, and choose lattice deform. So it deforms it about the same amount, but as you can see, it's quite too much. So I want to take those ones, go into top view, <coughs> sorry, get into wireframe, press G and then Y, hold it. Let's change the pivoting point back to boundary box, and then let's move this in the Y axis a little bit out to about here. I think that is good. Yeah, so that is good. Now I'm going to go into front view and I'm going to move it in the, on this side as well, like this. Now let me just go into edit, but let me pull this, come on, let me pull this here. Okay, so that deforms it quite much. So just pull it to about there, like that. Alright, so I'm going to hide the lattices now, hide them. Alright, so that gives us those two. Why isn't the mirror working? It should be mirroring. Oh, I think I know why. The mirror should be the last modifier down there. So let me remove it from the top. And I want to make it the last modifier. So add the mirror as the last modifier. So that the deformation is duplicated on the other side. Do the same with this. Remove the mirror from here. And add in the mirror as the last modifier. Like that. So you can see it's there. And it's looking good. Alright, so this video took longer than I expected. But... All the same, we finished two of these grills. I'm going to do this one off camera in the same uh, process as I did these ones. So I'm going to leave that one up to you as some kind of assignment for you guys to do. And I'll pretty much see you guys in the next video.